Hi Vogue, it's Kim Kardashian West, and today I'm gonna be going through some of my most iconic looks, some of my most tragic looks. I have no idea what's in this book, so this will be a fun journey. Oh my God, this look. This is literally one of my favorite, most iconic looks. First of all, this is what Paris and I were gonna be for Halloween this year but we ran out of time. I think we need to do this next year. How fun would that be? Those bags, I still have those bags, and one thing, Paris does not take care of her purses, so if you see what's inside of her bag, there's a million things from every kind of makeup, lashes, just everything. It's like a pharmacy inside of her bag, so I would not let her put anything inside of this bag. So it is an empty bag that she's carrying. Fun fact. Oh my God, okay, this is so embarrassing. This was the premiere of season one of Keeping Up With The Kardashians at our party. I probably borrowed this dress at Dash, kept the tag on her, just re-tagged it, and then returned it afterwards. It was by this like designer Foley, I think. I used to work the cash register so I would always remember, but I know my shoes were Jimmy Choo. My earrings and bracelet, I thought I had made it. I don't know why I did the lip and the eye and the hair and the dress and the jewels and the French tip nails. Obviously it's like cringeworthy, but like I still respect it and like laugh and think like, oh my God, that was so cute. I was so clueless. This was probably one of my worst looks of life. No, this is not my worst look of life, this is. This was at an Us Weekly party. I was able to afford a Fendi belt and matching Fendi boots. Any time I could go to an event, I would, because I just wanted my picture taken. That's all that mattered to me. Oh, okay. This was so much fun, and let me tell you, I lived in Juicy's. Like, it was either like a dress and heels or Juicy and Javianas. So that's what I wore every day to walk up and down Robertson Boulevard. I lived behind it. Kitson was in literally the back alley. So I would just go downstairs, go to Kitson, meet my friends. What a life we lived. French tip toenails to match the nails, the hoops. The whole thing is just pretty legendary if you ask me. I love it. And this era will always have such a close place in my heart. Like, I cherish every era. Oh, fun. This was, I think, my 30th birthday. And wow. This was my dark nail era, and I literally did my nails dark to try to, like, emulate that. It's the same exact color. I was just feeling nostalgic. You know, this is when I would host nightclubs. It was my favorite thing to do. It was, like, how I made my money. And I would never even drink, so I would just go and show up. And I don't even know. I don't even know why they would hire someone that doesn't even party and drink, but to go host parties and drink. But it was really cute. I love the heavy makeup. It's, it's a lot. The super long hair, it's cute. It's like very like Kim K, if that makes sense to you guys. Aw, this is so cute. This is at Kanye's fashion show in Paris. This is when him and I started our love affair. I'm wearing all Yeezy. For all, I think the brand was Kanye West. Not easy yet. Looks really sweet. Oh, Midori Sour. I was the spokesperson for Midori. It was green, so I had to wear green, and I thought it was so chic in my green Gucci velvet dress, and the side hair part was my thing. I really think I need to bring that back. But this was an era of like, when I loved my hair and makeup. Ooh, my first Met Ball. I was very pregnant, very puffy and bloated, and I was like, oh God, of course, the first time I go, I'm gonna be huge. Kanye was performing, so I wasn't actually invited. I was just Kanye's plus one, and that was okay with me, because I never really dreamed I would be at the Met Ball. I know no one really probably wanted me there at the time, but then I get there and I'm sitting at this table, and it was like every designer that I've ever just dreamed of was there. And so Ricardo was dressing me because he was dressing Kanye. So we chose a really stretchy fabric because I would be growing and we wanted to make sure that alterations were easy and it was comfortable. We had a black version of this and then the floral version of this. And I was like, I think I should just do the black version. And Ricardo was like, no, come on, we have to do the floral. It was just this, the floral was, 
Ricardo had said afterwards, like, what do you give a woman when she's pregnant? You sent her flowers. And it was such a sweet message of what, how Ricardo described it. But I was so insecure and I could never really speak up at that point because I just, you know, was so shy and just wanted to make everyone happy. And he said Anna really wanted the floral. And so I said, okay, floral it is. And on the car ride there, I remember Kanye saying, you look so beautiful, I'm so happy for you. He was so happy. And then I was crying like the whole way home because I just couldn't believe it. There was all these memes about me and this couch and I think like Robin Williams even tweeted it and said I look like Miss Doubtfire. Like it was like this whole thing. So I just like cried and now I love it. Like now it's like sick. Like I look back and I'm like, wow, they had the vision. This is like sick. I just remember the Olsen twins came up to me and loved my outfit and my gloves. And so none of the critics mattered because the Olsen twins approved and I loved it. Oh, latex. I love latex. This is in Australia. I'll always remember where I was and what I was doing. Giuseppe Zanotti's shoes and Atsuko Kudo or something. And I was really into this hair length. I think I am again. Oh, my first faux cover. So I remember Kanye told me that Anna wants to meet with him and I in New York and I had just had North and so I brought her and we go there and she presents us with the idea of being on the cover and I was like shaking. So I was just like, listen, I'm in shock and because she, she said nobody could know. So I was like, I want to get up and scream right now, but no one could know. So I don't want to make a big deal or everyone in this room will know what's just happening. We shot it at my mom's house and just being on set with Annie Leibovitz and Grace Coddington styling it. I think I took a moment and tried not to tear up and just like took deep breaths. But I just, I went in and had like three cookies and I like stuffed my face at the end of the shoot and was just like, we did it. Like I can't even believe that this was happening. I think my mom was there and was even like crying at one point. I mean, we all were just so excited that Anna believed in me and Kanye and you know, we're the first interracial couple on the cover of Vogue. And I think people started to take me seriously in fashion. And I remember just sitting in the glam, thinking like, this is just, I can't believe this is happening. It was such a surreal moment for me. Lon Vaughn, Albert Albaz, gave me this dress afterwards with the shoes and I have it in my archive and it's so special to me. Oh my gosh, okay, this is when I feel like we fashionably made it. Yeah, I did, you know, cause I was not that cool before. And so this is in Paris, my bachelorette big dinner party with all my girls wearing Balmain. This was like the height. I have an entire Balmain archive from this era. It was so amazing. This dress really means a lot to me. Blonde in Paris, I loved this. This trip to Paris was so much fun. This was like Givenchy, Ricardo Tichy era. Like I was so excited. I would let them just dress me up like a doll. I didn't even care. I knew between Ricardo, Kareen, and Kanye, they would make me look like the chicest person ever. And they did, look at this look. I, I loved it. Oh, this Vet Ma dress with the clear Yeezy heels going to Kanye's concert, I think at Madison Square Garden. The tricky thing about the sequence is it always does that reflection on your face. So there is that weird face reflection, but I had to make North this dress because she saw it in my closet and it was so sparkly. So we remade it for her and she absolutely loved it. Ooh, Miami. You could tell we're in Miami by what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a diamond Cartier choker. I loved this power mesh. My friend Simone came in and styled it because I didn't have anything to wear with some Yeezy heels. And this was like such a thing. I remember there were so many knockoffs of this dress and it was so sheer in Miami. Like I can't believe I wore that. Oh, I think this was my favorite era. Platinum blonde hair. Yeezy tones, Yeezy clothes, Yeezy campaign. This was like so effortless, so cool. You know, Kanye had been designing lots of looks with really comfy sweats and heels and had this whole vision that sweats will just be like the new vibe. I always trust his vision. I think he thinks just like, or like sees like years ahead. 
And so it really is interesting to see. And he always will come to me and be like, okay, I, I know what's gonna be like next in fashion. I remember he brought me like a, a Margiela jacket and a Balmain jacket in like 2008. I had no idea what that was. And he was like, I'm gonna introduce you to like really cool designers and I'll be your ghost stylist. And I was like, okay, like I'm, I'm down for a ghost stylist. And that's how it really started. And so I always say like my best stylist and my best looks always are the ones that he puts together. This campaign was shot in the back of his office. We would just change looks like 30 times and just we knew the paparazzi was out there. We'd go to the gas station, we'd go to the you know supermarket, wherever we could go, knowing that the paparazzi would just follow our every move and they would just put out photos and that would be the whole Yeezy campaign. Very genius. Okay, so this was the LACMA event. I was wearing an old Tom Ford Gucci suit. This was like the classic example of why I invented Skims body tape. This was probably black packing tape that was used, or like gaffer's tape. And I didn't tape it to me, like I just taped my boobs up and then I didn't even connect it. I just figured like I will be very careful. And it worked, and I love the blonde hair. This blonde hair makes me really miss it. Okay, more Yeezy. This is at the Yeezy office. Yeezy head to toe, boots, bike shorts. I remember everyone made fun of me for these bike shorts, literally. And it was like a puffer and bike shorts, like what is going on? And then of course, everyone was wearing it like two years later. I got roasted for like two years on this, but I loved it. Oh, this is Kylie's 21st birthday party. I love the mix of the colors. I got the bag in Japan. This is a Yeezy dress that he made. And these are Louboutins. And I just love the wet hair. I was really in shape here. This was like a year ago. I gotta get there again. People's Choice Awards. This was in a Gautier dress. This image is a huge reason why adding Skims shade range was really important to me because you can clearly see the shapewear underneath and it was just too light for me. So I did a whole Skims video where I put on the shade that actually matches me and it looks completely sheer, but it's fully lined in the shapewear. I love a high snatched pony. It really does give you a little lift on your face when you need it. It's always one of my favorite looks. Oh my God, so this dress here, I was going with Chris to receive an award. We literally look like I don't know, we look like we're going to the Oscars or something. This is Terry Mugler from the archive and this was the start of our relationship. The House of Mugler and Mr. Mugler let me wear this dress. I never thought I would ever fit in a dress like that because the original model was a lot smaller on top than me, but we made it work. I was so shocked. The bracelets, everything, even down to the old Mugler shoe. This was like one of my favorite, favorite looks. Like, I, I love it. I know it's like kind of crazy and risque, but um, I love it. We look sharp. And oh my God. So the beginning of my relationship with Mugler really led to this moment of what I had been waiting for and dreamed of, working with Manfred Mugler and having him have this vision of me wet and dripping out of the ocean coming from like California onto the Met carpet and the wet hair, wet looking makeup, everything about it was just dripping and he is such a genius. So the fact that I was able to work with him, I mean, such a dream come true. All right, so I think that's it. This was so much fun to go through these looks. I love to see old looks or current looks. It's always fun. I cherish every single phase that I've had. So I can't wait, it's not over. I cannot wait for another decade of looks.